Developing more HIV prevention and treatment options is vital to ending the AIDS epidemic in sub-Saharan Africa. Scientific researchers as the ongoing HIV research for prevention tagged HIV R4P virtual conference observed that despite advancement in HIV intervention, there is the need for more efforts to encourage uptake of oral pre-exposure prophylaxis PrEP. Basi Itaipang, who joins the conference from Nigeria, reports that new research findings on long-acting PREP were also presented, including antibody-mediated prevention, AMP. Over 30 years now, HIV research has identified many safe and effective prevention modalities towards the prevention of new HIV infections and viral load suppression. Though the range and use of HIV prevention methods are increasing, experts at HIV R4P conference say they remain insufficient, therefore an urgent need to develop and make available more appropriate, highly effective, and long-term HIV prevention solutions. This informed the HIV Research for Prevention Conference, tagged HIV R4P, that provides a platform to advance HIV prevention research to a growing consensus with a combination of scientific approaches across the various fields. What then is new about 2020 HIV R4P Conference? especially exciting to see the progress that will be shared tonight at the HIV R4P virtual conference and throughout the conference. These research advances on options like broadly neutralizing antibodies and injectable PrEP could help significantly strengthen our already existing HIV prevention toolkit. Experts at the conference wants HIV response to have a variety of tools as some people may prefer the long-acting injectables taken once in two months, while some others may not. The depravarant ring placed in a woman's vagina was also introduced and recommended by WHO as a way of expanding women's options so that they can choose the best method that best meets their individual needs. Records also show that women bear the burden of global HIV-S epidemic with nearly 60% of new adult infections in sub-Saharan Africa occurring among women. The effect of COVID-19 on HIV intervention was also discussed. WHO estimates that over 35 million people have died from HIV in the last six months and appeals for efforts to mitigate and overcome interruptions brought about during the COVID-19 pandemic on HIV treatment and other related illnesses. Basi Taipa, NTA News. And joining us from London via Zoom to talk on recent research findings on HIV prevention from the ongoing 2021 International AIDS Conference is co-chair of the HIV R4P Conference, Sheena McCormack, a clinical epidemiologist from University College. Ma'am, thank you for joining us on NTA International News. Great to be here, thank you. Now, we understand the 2021 research for prevention is the fourth in the series. Tell us what is new about the latest research. No, I, I suppose to demonstrate what's new, that the long-acting uh, cabotegravir injections as a form of pre-exposure prophylaxis is probably one of the, the big news. Um, in that it's reached the end of its story. The, the very first conference we had for HIV R4P was in 2014, six years ago, and that particular product was at the beginning of its story then, just starting the clinical trials. And at this conference, we've heard the second of two trials showing that it was in fact in those settings and those populations more effective than the oral pill. Now, the oral pill works brilliantly and has been rolled out programmatically in countries in sub-Saharan Africa and throughout the world, uh, and is certainly doing a great job in, in reducing new infections. And you see that very clearly in, in my own um, country, um, in the UK, uh, we've seen very dramatic reductions. Um, but it's not possible or even attractive for everybody to take a pill. And I guess that's where we, we do need to offer women choices like we do for contraception. And so the long-acting injectables and the ring are offering new
new and exciting choices for women to have. You said um, the injectables is the new thing in the latest research. Now, can you give us the differences between the long-acting injectables compared to the daily pills which people have over time gotten used to? So in, in these two trials, um, they actually, in both groups, they had long-acting injectables and pills. But one group only had the active injection and the other group had the active pills. And in those two studies, so it was women in sub-Saharan Africa and um, men who have sex with men and transgender women in a broader population in the US and uh, South America, where they did show in those populations um, a, a superior, so the, the inject injectables appear to be more uh, effective. And I guess the difference really is that you're going along to get an injection every two months. What you've got to do is, is to get to the clinic every couple of months. When you're taking a pill, you need to remember to take it every day, and it's not for everybody. But that's not to say that PrEP hasn't been hugely successful um, in many populations where they are able to take a pill regularly. And some people will prefer a pill because um, you can then stop taking the pill when you're no longer at risk of, uh, of catching HIV. All right. So one of the new HIV interventions is the vaginal ring. Uh, that sounds new. Please tell us what it is all about and the side effects of it, if any. So we know we know quite a bit about the ring. It's been in um, two big trials, um, and then it's been in what they call an open label extension, where women get to choose if they continue to use the ring. And the majority of women did choose to do that, and they really uh, liked using it. Um, what's really exciting about the ring is it opens the door to include other drugs, including contraceptives. So you could have a multi-purpose um, uh, ring, um, perhaps even combining some products that would reduce your risk of catching um, sexually transmitted infections. So that's very attractive and again exciting will be the right choice for some women at some times uh, in their lives. In terms of side effects, uh, very little of the drug, um, uh, the antiretroviral drug in the ring is absorbed, so actually far less side effects um, than you would see if you were taking um, the tablet in, into your whole system. Um, the outbreak of COVID-19 has affected the health sector seriously. Now, how can this conference or what is the conference bringing forward to mitigate um, this um, effect, especially as it affects HIV? So I think you're, you're absolutely right. COVID-19 has had a terrible impact uh, on populations everywhere in the world. It's a burden all of us have shared acutely over the last year. Um, I think that one of the um, really interesting things is that although our, our story for an HIV vaccine is somewhat suspended at the moment, the work that's been done to try and find an HIV vaccine has actually provided groundwork for identifying these COVID-19 vaccines. So that's really exciting because so many of the clinical trial groups and the populations who've taken part in HIV vaccine trials before came forward to take part in COVID-19 vaccine trials. And even today we have the results of two more trials um, that have happened uh, in populations in, in sub-Saharan Africa. So that is very exciting. A lot of that knowledge has translated, but there's a very big difference between COVID-19 and HIV. In COVID-19, we know that people who catch this virus do recover naturally. So we've had a good example of the sort of immune response we need to create. So yeah. that's good. But you asked me, what does the conference do? What a conference does is it provides a, a platform that people can connect and network, and they can learn of best practices. So yes, you're right, it's been challenging to deliver drugs to people, it's been challenging to see people in this period, and we can learn how people manage to navigate that in some countries, and then where it's perhaps been difficult, they can adopt some of those practices. We, we thank so you. we do have that we always, thank you. Uh, and, and we connect people. We thank you very much for sharing those insights with us. Thank you. I wish you a good evening. <laughs> Same to you. That was Sheena McCormick, a clinical epidemiologist, speaking on latest developments on research on HIV. You're watching the news on NT International. More stories after the break.